Hey YouTube, what's up? So today we're going to talk about room clearing, um, specifically a three-man room clearing team because that's what I'm familiar with. So starting off, um, I don't have a blue gun, so I am going to be demonstrating with my sidearm um, just to show all of you people that apparently think people on the internet don't know anything about gun safety. Uh, weapon is cleared and no ammunition around. Um, I may not even use it. Um, I may just use my hands, but I don't have a blue gun or anything, so I am going to be showing with that. Uh, a little bit of background story. Um, I do work in law enforcement, but I don't work on the streets, so I don't have any um, formal uh, training, sort of. And the reason why I say sort of was because I did take a four-year criminal justice course in high school. Um, we had extra curriculum extracurricular activities I can never say that road that <laughs> shit I cannot talk uh, I could never say that word um, but that was my extracurricular activity was a three-man build and search team um, me and two other guys that's what we did is we cleared rooms um, after school we'd practice for a couple hours clearing rooms clearing the, uh, the structure the building um, our little warehouse that we had for a classroom and uh, we'd switch, switch from primary, secondary, and security. So I'm just gonna kind of talk about the pointers on that. Um, obviously, it's gonna be a little bit different if you have a SWAT team, which is usually like five to six man team. Uh, some are a little bit more, maybe eight, uh, or one man room clearing, uh, which you never really want to do. Uh, you really want to have two to three at minimum, but occasionally it does happen, and that's a completely different ball game. Um, today, we're going to be just talking about the very basics. I am in a very small structure, um, unable to edit right now due to some uh, software issues, uh, not having a laptop and that kind of thing, and uh, iOS changes not allowing you to upload your iPhone videos to YouTube and whatnot. So I'm going to try to briskly run over this, uh, kind of show you the, the topping, or the top talking points such as fatal uh, fatal funnel uh, but book and or button hook I'm sorry I really can't talk button hook and um, an X pattern um, at least that's what we called them so there, there might be some other names and whenever I kind of demonstrate what they are uh, then you would understand uh, maybe if you use a different terminology uh, one thing is I don't really have any T interception rooms meaning I don't have anything that really goes in depth on both sides. It's kind of the door frame is right there on a corner. So um, we're gonna have to kind of bear with that real quick. Let me shut this closet door. Get a little bit more room. Okay. So um, we're not gonna really be able to, to show that. And of course I am all by myself trying to do a three man jobs so let's just move it over here real quick um now this is a very very small room like extremely small i'd say probably probably a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12 somewhere around there so really this first step fatal funnel doesn't necessarily exist in this kind of a room it does but it doesn't uh, arguments for another time um Obviously, your X hook and button hook, you can't really demonstrate. Um, it can still be done. Um, you can see I have maybe a three foot hallway. Uh, so right here is the end of the hallway. So I don't have much room for pieing around, um, but I'm just gonna try to demonstrate and illustrate how we did it uh, in our training. And of course, with a lot bigger either building or whatever. So starting out with stack up, you have three men, um, usually one one guy, and it all depends, circumstantial, but let's say small confined area, one guy, he's up front, pulling guard, um, watching up in the front, the other guy, um, hand on shoulder, safety circle, what a safety circle is, let me drop this down a little bit, well, that was the wrong way. So, safety circle, you have your gun, uh, just like this right here. 
Um, so got to be safety circle, hand on shoulder, opposite shoulder, and kind of looking off in this direction while your guard is, or your primary is looking off in this way. Um, if it is a bigger open space, then you could um, do like this, or we'll mostly just be doing like this if it's a small area. That way we're not cross-firing. Rear security, um, and then also situational uh, awareness uh, is really key on all of this. That's why you kind of want one man here, one man here, and one man back. The way we ran our security is the way a lot of people would run it. Uh, we had a vest, uh, so your security pull his arm back like so. Drop this back down. So security would pull back right here and just tuck his hand up underneath uh, secondary's vest. Or uh, if you wanted to, if you don't have a vest, ball up his shirt or grab his belt or something like that. I mean, it is what it is. There's no hard feelings. It's, you know, you guys are a team. You gotta work together to get the job done. Um, it's not anything homo going on or anything. Uh, you're just clearing your, clearing your building out. And then you would be in the front, basically in a position like this, scanning, making sure nobody will come up behind y'all. Um, there's two different types of room entries uh, that we worked on. Mostly, I'm not really familiar with any others. Uh, these are what we pretty much practice on. Um, as you heard me mention, there's a button hook and there is a X. Uh, so the button hook, well first off, let's just move this camera and talk about how we would get to the uh, door frame area. So we're coming down the hallway, we would stop let me move this camera over to try to stay in the camera angle here. Okay, so as we're moving down the hallway, we stop right here. You see an open door. We're going to take that first. There's two other doors here, but they're kind of closed, whatever. This is our target room. This is what we're going to focus on. So, and I don't have much room to work here. You want to go as wide as possible. Uh, of course, if you have like 20 feet, don't go 20 feet, but take a few a few feet, a few big steps, and you want to pie around that corner. And what you want to do is you want to slowly pie, slowly pie. And your secondary guy, he's going to stay back here. He's not going to pie with you because um, this is third man or three man team. If it's a bigger team, then you know there, there's different ways of doing it. But right now we're focused on three man team. Secondary will stay right here. And cover downrange in a safety circle position um, for crossfire and your security. He will stay in the back watching for back behind you. So you want to pie and pie and go slowly and slowly. And you just want to make little tiny baby steps watching every single new piece of room that you see as you come out. Now, the way we were trained is even if I get to right here okay I'm not even a quarter ways through my pie if I see someone I'm gonna start challenging them police police get you out uh, get your hands out when I see them blah 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 start calling them out of the room and you would just try to stay as covered as possible get him out of the room secure him and then continue your pie so in this whole scenario we're just gonna say this room is completely empty so we keep pawing, keep pawing, keep pawing, and then whenever I get up here, okay, so let me move that. When I get over here, ideally there's going to be more space. I have maybe half a foot of space here, so I am kind of sticking out. But ideally, you want to be back behind here, and your other guy, he's going to be back behind here. Okay, now you want to really focus on or decide prior whether you're going to do a button hook or a X or cross entry or whatever you want to call it. Um, our team, we had signs for a button hook. We would do this for a cross hook, or a, I'm sorry, an X. We would do this. So your primary, 
usually your primary will decide which entry you'll take because he's already kind of seen the room a little bit better than your secondary. <clears throat> um, so your primary will most likely tell you what you want to take. Um, and, and like I said, for our team, um, we had signs, uh, button hook, we just do a little, like a pirate hook thing, and then like a cross, you know, like like a bathroom cross or whatever, like when you're in kindergarten. Um, at that point, we would look at each other, give ourselves a little nod, and then we would execute. Um, for here, I'm gonna show you, that was attached to the door there. I'm going to show you the button hook because that's pretty much the only thing I can really do. Actually, I can do both of them, um, but I'll just show you from whichever angle. So a button hook, I'm right here, and I'm going to come in right here. And I'm going to start scaling this wall, okay? I'm just kind of move this over into the corner there. Okay, so I'm going to start scaling this wall and then moving over this way. And looking at it that way while my partner is doing the exact same thing on this other wall okay there was scenarios where we practice three men into the building or into that room so in that case imagine you know your secondary did the exact same thing on the opposite wall for a button hook you just come right in and go down and clear that fatal funnel. We'll talk more about that here in a sec. And clear that fatal funnel as fast as possible. He's going to do it on this side. Your security is going to be out here in the hallway, looking back, making sure no one's coming up behind y'all while you're clearing the room. In a small room like this, security is going to stay out here. And then the way we done it, if we were doing it this way, primary and secondary would come in clear this room, fall out, the primary is now security, the secondary is still going to be secondary on this, uh, or it just kind of depends on who gets the door first, but for example, primary is going to go security, uh, security is now going to be primary, and secondary is uh, still secondary if he falls back into the group that way. Uh, the deal is, is we're not going to come out here, restack and be like, hey, yo, you're in my spot, kind of shit. Um, you're just going to stack up and go to your next room. So now, from the other perspective, the cross Xing, uh, or the X entrance, or whatever, it's not really a fancy word like the button hook. Um, the idea of this is you can already pretty much see a little bit of where you're going. So the same procedures in the beginning, same, excuse me, same thing. You know, pie, 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 pie. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and show because I have room over here. I don't have anything over here. Okay, so, uh, you know, the, the one, two, three, give this little hand signals. And then, of course, it's gonna be really hard, but you want number one and number two coming in that door almost in sync. Okay? Whoever goes in that door, you gotta be. The next person, he's got to be right behind him, like right here. He's got to be coming in already. Um, and then same thing, you're going to scale this wall all the way down to the corner, turn back over this way. So another one that would not be practical for this room, but one that we used a lot where we practiced at because we had a big, uh, it used to be a shop uh, for shop class. So it was a big, huge, like, I don't know, probably 50 foot by 50 foot shop. Uh, really, really big. Um, lots of area, couple of rooms in it. So we used that. And a lot of times what we would do is we'd have a three man entry. So we'd have two of them going across the scales, scaling the walls just like so. And our security guy, our third guy, would come down the center. And what you would do is you'll get out of the fatal funnel, which is off in the doorway over here. And essentially, you're wanting to move and scan right over here while your buddies are scaling down a 12-foot wall, focusing on here. 
So that way you've got plenty of cover. Uh, of course, you don't want to stay right here. It's just kind of a dead zone. Um, the reason why you don't want to get caught up in there is because doors are deadly. People hide behind them. People hide just right here. So you want to clear and you want to start working on that room as fast as possible. Okay. So at this time, what you would want is, let's say for a button hook, your two guys, they go in and a button hook, if you have a pretty wide door, you can get in around pretty much at the exact same time. Um, and then your third guy would just come in and start scaling here. Now, it's one important thing for your security, the one that's going to go down the middle, if you're going to do this type of entrance, is to not get ahead of your other two guys. Notice you got, you know, they got 12 foot plus, whatever the scenario is, to move before he can turn and start covering down this way. So you don't want to be way up here and your two guys are way back here on either side of you and now you're potentially in the line of fire uh, performing this little triangle effect kind of thing. So what we, are, what we are told to do on that is to kind of come out of the fatal funnel. Um, of course it is kind of in the open. Um, really not the safest thing in my opinion, uh, but this is kind of what we were taught. Uh, come out in the middle, try to scan the room and wait for your your secondary officers or, or uh, your teammates to get those corners rounded and meet up with you in a line and then take the rest of the room or whatever it might be. Um, say if I came up, we we'll use this side for example since there's a door. Say I came up to a door right here and I'm running uh, I'm running this wall. I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna continue waiting and I know this is in the fatal funnel because I'm like two feet but this is a very very small room so just bear with it. Act like that door's not here, okay? So I'm gonna sit here and wait for my guys to, to clear that room and sometimes you might have to take a door by yourself. Um, you might just have to, uh, we had some hand, we had some other hand signals, uh, but those are the only two that I can remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you might have to take the room by yourself or the door by yourself. Uh, if it's leading to a bigger structure, just pie around it and keep going. Um, but ideally, especially if there's only one room uh, in there uh, or one door in there, ideally what you want to do is have your team clear the rest of that building, meet back at that door and take that door and just start working away from way. Uh, again, everything uh, kind of changes because structures change. You know, structure is the same pretty much and every scenario is different. Uh, honestly, it's going to be a lot easier with a five, six, or eight man SWAT, uh, SWAT team. Um, usually uh, not a three man building search team. Um, trying to think of some interesting things that, because we had some really interesting things. Okay, so one thing is we had, and it was at a school, so we had all kinds of chairs and desks and everything just everywhere. Um, but along the front wall was a cabinet like a big bookshelf and we had this one dude in our class that was pretty small like freaking five foot or something and he hid in the bottom of it and we blew right past him clearing um, I don't remember if it, it might have been me I think he's got us on this a couple of times and he would just put the recycling bin in front of him and we wouldn't even realize he was there um, or some paper or something. Like if this dude was tiny, or he could actually get into like a like a normal cupboard, um, in the bottom bottom cabinets of a of your countertops or whatever. He could fit in there, and so he would get in one of those because we had like this countertop running around over there, and we would just blow right past him. 
So what we would do is uh, we eventually would like clear the whole room and then we would start together going through all the little nooks and crannies like opening up uh, um, drawers and, and that kind of stuff. Really wasn't the best uh, safety wise of doing. Um, most of what our scenario bases were were like Uh, let's see. So if you're like applying it to real world applications, would be more like a suspect ran and ran into a house, um, and you got to run in there, clear the house, and get them. Maybe you're doing a warrant service or something like this. Um, all the stuff that we were training to handle was not necessarily barricaded subjects with weapons. Of course, we did train with subjects with weapons, with knives, with hostages and that kind of stuff to change it up a little bit. But for the most part, that was not what we trained. That's what the SWAT team guys trained. Um, we had a whole bunch of different categories uh, in, this, uh, in this program that I was in. And so the SWAT, they had you know, all that cool stuff. Um, we were basically like the mini SWAT team. Uh, we would just go in and try to find subjects hiding. So. There were a lot of things that we could have done differently. Um, a lot of this is training that we took from class and we kind of improvised our own little plans um, occasionally. Uh, and of course the structure of it was really weird because it was super, super big, like a warehouse almost. Those are always the hardest. Um, something the house is much more structured. Um, it's not just one big old open area. Uh, it's more structured and maze light so uh, enough rambling on about that uh, fatal funnel you always want to clear it that is basically the doorway is your funnel and it leads out and I mean technically the funnel doesn't ever really end um, it just kind of fades out but you know a good probably seven foot seven foot circumference around that door would be considered a fatal funnel. Um, right here, you're kind of in, you know, you're in a, a, a no man zone, you're in dead zone, really. You gotta choose which way you wanna go and you gotta go fast. Um, so that is pretty much all for this. This was a super long video. Uh, did not expect it to be that long. Uh, like I said, one man room clearing, five to six, eight man room clearing, completely different. Uh, this is just kind of what I, know and have some practice and training uh, on doing. So hopefully it gives you some tips, maybe you guys that are interested, uh, maybe you guys that watch SWAT members or like SWAT movies or whatever, military kicking in doors and clearing the houses, maybe getting a little bit of a backstory on some of the things that they're doing and why it's done like that. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.